Hi, kiddos. Now we've got Riva Derekchi Crocodile or See You Later Alligator, which I really like that they pulled this from a real life event and that it's in our library. Begun by Fred Mar Marcelino and completed by Eric Poibaret. P U Y B A R E T. I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> P. I cannot say your name. Arrivederci Crocodile or See You Later Al Alligator. Mm, this is going to be a fun one for me. Drat that Napoleon. First he kidnapped me from my beloved Egypt. Then he dragged me to Paris for everyone to gawk at. And then he tried to eat me for dinner. Luckily I escaped. But where did that leave me? Hiding in a sewer with nothing to eat. Now I mean nothing. No pelicans, no flamingos, not even a frog. I was wasting away, a shadow of my former self. I even had a few cavities. Oh, to get out of that town. Then one day, a newspaper headline caught my eye. Napoleon to tour Italy. First stop, Venice. Venice, perfect. A watery city of canals and Italian food. What more could a crocodile want? Cannelloni, here I come. I haven't had cannelloni in a hot minute. You should fix that. I slithered out early the next morning and found a hiding place in Napoleon's caravan. The trip, very tedious. See below, travel rating, lodging, don't ask, food, self-service, and service, none. Finally, we reached the coast and hopped a royal barge. Destination, Venice. Well, if Paris was all useless parks and grand boulevards, Venice was just the opposite. Convenient canals for swimming around town and lots of open squares with foods for sale. I couldn't begin to identify all the goodies on display. And atop a large column, a statue of, yes, a crocodile. This was more like it. A town where food and crocodiles are appreciated. As usual, that vandal Napoleon had his eye on everything. Treasures flowed out of palaces to be craved for shipment back to Paris. Get me paintings, he screamed, lots of them. Sculptures, too, and tapestry, silver, gold, you name it, I want it. Boy, would I love to teach that bully a lesson in manners. But for the moment, I opted for a swim and a bite to eat. Getting around the canals was so easy. This town was made for a crocodile. I was about to check out the local mar uh, market when suddenly I was distracted by the most heavenly aroma. Nearby, at an outdoor cafe, a customer was being served a heaping bowl of pasta with ragulala bolognese. I was so enchanted that I thoughtlessly wandered out into the sunlight to get a better whiff. In a flash, I was surrounded by a band of costumed revelers. Superb, one shouted. How original, cried another. A dragon. Oh, don't be silly, a third person snapped. He's supposed to be a crocodile, right? All I could do was nod. It's the best costume ever, they all cried. Come join us for lunch. What charming company, and what a delicious meal. Spaghetti with meatballs, veal scallopini, and eggplant parmigiana, followed by mixed greens, gorgonzola cheese, and crusty bread. I skipped the cappuccino. No one could stop talking about the new guest. Extraordinary outfit, said one. Do you believe those teeth, said another, and that appetite, very crocodile. I had a few bowls of gelato and a cheesecake to top things off. I could tell my new friends were impressed. Ciao, cocodrillo, -co -co they all cried. He must come to the grand ball tonight. Costume ball? Oh, I don't know. Then again, don't they always stir, serve suckling pigs or pheasants at those fancy dues? Maybe I'd give it a try. But first things first, nap time. When I awoke, starving, it was already dusk and the streets were filled with laughing partygoers. Following the crowd, I found myself at the brightly lit palazzo. What a splendid affair. And I fit in so effortlessly. Everyone was enchanted by my outfits. 
just like the crocodile statue in the piazza, someone said. Fabulous workmanship, gushed another. I bet the costume was made in Milan. Flattering, yes, but I couldn't keep my eyes off the buffet table. Suddenly, all the pleasantries ended. Napoleon had arrived. I slid behind a column. Rats, would I be recognized? Luckily, at that moment, the orchestra struck up a lively tune and everyone headed for the dance floor. This was my chance to duck for cover. Maybe grab a snack or two on the way out. But now what? A rather forward young lady was whisking me off for a dance. I briefly struggled to get away, but, oh, that music. A catchy mazurka. Who could resist? Not this crocodile. Sure, the steps were new, but when you've got a crocodile rhythm and grace, you catch on fast. My partner was a natural, too. But could she handle some Egyptian dances? I started with an old standard, the rather staid mummy minuet, easy enough. Then, for a change of pace, a lively pom-pom. Boy, she caught on fast. Then the king touch strut, the Egyptian conniption. These are way too cheesy. Then a hush came over the room as Napoleon strode across the floor. Thrusting an accusing arm at me, he hissed, I know that crocodile anywhere. He's mine. I was supposed to have him for dinner. Everyone stared in disbelief at this rude intruder. My lovely young partner stepped forward. You go too far, sir, she said. It's one thing stealing paintings and tapestries, but quite another to insult the star of a ball. A roar of approval rose through the crowd. Then they hoisted me onto their shoulders and we made a dash for the piazza. What fun to see the sputtering Napoleon and his crew chasing after us. Arrest that crocodile, he screamed. Arrest everybody. Napoleon reached the waterside too late, lost his footing, and landed in the water. Another cheer came from the crowd. Well, everything should have been perfect. Gondolas, moonlight, music, and merriment. But I couldn't stop thinking about that fabulous, wasted buffet. I had no choice. Back to the palazzo for me. With a little stop on the way. Mm, he's gonna bite his butt. <laughs> I enjoy my crocodile. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Good night, guys. <laughs>